So welcome back everybody. This is part two in our outdoor entertaining and kitchen build. Part one was building the shed over here where we're gonna store all of our cooking appliances. The whole plan with this area is true off-grid style cooking over coals, over firewood, and over appliances that we're producing and making ourselves here on the channel. So in today's episode, we're gonna put up a privacy fence here and over there. The reason we're doing the privacy fence is to give us a backdrop for recording, to set up things like sinks, planter boxes. The privacy fence's intention is to feel like we have walls here, like this is an extension of the house and our own outdoor space and room right here. So let's get started. I'm gonna build a very robust privacy fence today. We're 20 miles from the coast in Florida. We got hit by a major hurricane last year. While this may not be hurricane proof, I'm not doing your typical four by fours, pre-built and pre-assembled panels that are stapled together. I want something a lot more robust than you typically see your standard privacy fence. It's important to know whenever you put privacy fences in, know where all your plumbing electrical is. I have some down here. I have to be careful of that. And it's important to know whenever you put up a privacy fence, make sure you give adequate spacing off of things like say your outside AC condenser unit. So let's get post marked out every eight feet over there and drilled. Same thing here, get our post in, and I'll explain how we're gonna set those. So I have all my posts but one set on this side. And I wanna show y'all something. You see where I have pulled this string and it lines up with the post that supports this corner of the shed because I purposely have squared off the shed for this fence. We measured all that out at another point in time in a past video. Got another rebar stake right here that my string line goes to. And I know that this direction my fence is nice and squared up with the front porch of the house. We didn't show how we measured all that. I've got my holes roughly 40 inches deep, which is a bit overkill, but again, we're trying to make a very strong fence here. We catch a lot of wind from thunderstorms, tropical storms, and hurricanes. I'm also putting six by sixes in, which is definitely overkill. Most people do four by fours. So at the bottom of those holes, you've seen I just put a loose fill gravel down there. You see all the different size rock that's in it? but I'm a huge believer in putting gravel in the bottom of a post hole when you use concrete, which I'm gonna use. That's something else a lot of people don't use on a fence. They just put a four by four in dirt and call it good. And they wind up with a lot of shifting and the fence looking like this after it gets caught in really high winds. Concrete can be controversial, I'm not denying that, but I've had really good luck for my entire life putting concrete around post and holes. It adds weight and heft to the post and really locks it in solid for all the banging and screwing that we're about to be doing on it over the next day or so. But I do not believe in putting concrete around a post without a good gravel base for drainage. Posts will absorb water, concrete will absorb water and you need somewhere for it to go or you will rot your post out. That's why I'm a firm believer in packing gravel, several inches of it in the bottom of a hole so it doesn't seal off with some of the clay that we have on our soil. You can see we start getting a lot more clay over there. So we're just creating free drainage. This is a personal preference for me. So what I'm gonna do now is pull this post to that string. So that's my reference string. It's a nice straight line because I want this fence to be perfectly straight. And I'm gonna take my level, work my post around in the hole. As Soon as I touch the string, I want the post to be nice and plumb straight up and down this way and straight up and down this way. So again, we get that perfectly straight fence. 
Then I'll pour a bag of concrete mix around this. I have had really good luck with just pouring a bag of dry mixed concrete around a post. Eventually it hardens up just due to moisture in the soil or rainwater. I'm gonna go ahead and wet it today with a garden hose so it's firmed up for us to work on tomorrow and put pressure against this. A lot of people say you need to mix up your aggregate, mix up your concrete with water before pouring. That's correct. If you want a super strong mix, that's what you do. We're just trying to set a post here. We're trying to add some weight to it, not overly concerned. If we were pouring the foundation of a house or a major structure, I always pre-mix and wet my concrete before pouring. But when packing it around a post, I prefer to pour it in dry, kind of move it around. You can still shift your post a little, get it perfectly plumb, and then I'll wet it up. Or if I'm just building a fence somewhere else, I'll let rainwater and natural moisture firm it up down the road. I've pulled posts out before doing this and they're always solid as can be. But again, to get the strongest mix possible for like a foundation, you always wanna to mix to your manufacturer specs ahead of time. All right, it looks pretty good right there. So we're gonna grab us a bag of concrete and pour it around it. All right, I'll stop there while I can still shift my post around a little and we'll check. Still perfect. All right, now I'll pack my dry mix in while still checking for plumb. At this point, we can wet the mix, let it harden up overnight, or you could pack more dirt in here, still checking for plumb, and let the natural moisture in the ground harden this over time. So now we'll just repeat the process here with all these posts, get them right up to the string line. I like to stay a tiny bit off the string line so one particular post isn't making contact with it and putting a wave into my fence. And again, there's many different ways you can do this. There's fast setting foam to set posts that seems to be popular nowadays. I want the heft and weight and the lock in power of the concrete, or you can put it straight in dirt. You could pour concrete pillars, put wet set brackets on top. There's so many different ways to go about this. a discussion about these horizontal runners that we're about to put here to nail our fencing to. So if you have perfectly flat ground, it's gonna be so much easier for you to install those. I do not. There is probably 16 inches of ground change from this post to the one across over there. So a pretty significant increase. We're gonna to have to be trimming our panels and I had to go through and figure out how do you get a level line on all the posts, a reference line, so to speak, to measure everything else off of. That way our posts are cut off at the correct height, our horizontal runners at the correct height all the way around. So there's a lot to that. I can't recommend enough get you one of these very cheap laser levels. I'll put a link down in the description. I got mine off of Amazon years ago. From hanging pictures in the house to shooting lines out here and leveling posts, this works so well. Now you can pull string lines and put a bubble level on the string line. There's lots of affordable ways to find a good reference line, but this is so quick. Now I had to come out because this is a cheap model and do this after dark. So here's a video clip right here of me shooting the line around. This is a perfectly self-leveling laser, so it gives me a perfectly level line right there. So I just shot a line on all of these posts, marked it. This is my reference line. I didn't care where I shot it, but now I know I've got a perfect level reference line on every single post. I came back and found my lowest post, which is gonna be this one right here. I can actually physically just see that. And I use this reference line to measure down, to measure up, to figure out where I want my horizontal runners to go. And I know that this post right here is gonna have my longest fence panel, which I bought six foot panels that we're gonna nail on right here. 
So that means starting from here, going all the way back around, we're gonna have to cut almost every single panel because we want our top of our fence perfectly level. That's what your eyes are gonna see. And well, the fencing and the panels themselves are gonna have to follow this ground that's doing this all the way around and eventually sloping back up. So it does make a lot of extra work, but I wanna tell you about to shoot a level line like that, a reference line. Like I said, there's so many other ways you can do it. And then I was able to measure up to here put a mark on my post, I'm about to draw a line across, and I know I'm gonna put one of my horizontal runners here. I found right in the middle where I wanted to put one, and I'm spacing one up several inches off of the ground down here. Now my six foot panels are gonna go up to here, but I'm stopping my horizontal runners down beneath that because this has dog ears, cut ears off of the panel, and I don't wanna be seeing what I'm nailing into back there. So we're kind of tucking everything from the bottom up, top down, and one in the middle to keep our fence panels from bowing. So I went around quite a while this morning making these marks, going off of that reference line that I shot last night. Now that I have these marks, I'm just gonna draw lines. I know I'm gonna put my horizontal runner right here and butt it up to the top of this line. Probably should have put the line on the bottom so I could physically see it. I'm gonna put another one right here. I'm gonna put another one right here. This horizontal runner is gonna be spaced off the ground quite a bit because again, the ground slopes up and it's almost gonna be touching the ground at the other end. I had to try to find a happy medium. We're also gonna space our fence board about an inch off the ground because we're gonna rock this entire area in and I do not like having wood touching the ground. Even though this is treated lumber I'm gonna be using, it still has the potential to rot out if you actually physically put it in moisture on the dirt. This is not heavily treated lumber. So you can see I just got a pallet load in, and this is called a dog gear or a picket fence board, whatever you wanna call them. But I am not going with pre-made picket fence panels because those are built very cheaply. They're built out of lightweight materials and they have a tendency to pull loose, blow out, and it's just not something I want for a fence that I know is gonna experience some wind. Now these are roughly five and a half inches wide, six foot long, you can also get them in eight foot and I believe they're a 5 8 material right here. But this is a much thicker and bigger picket than those little pre-made panels. Try to stay away from those if you can, unless you're in an area to where you're just not gonna get much wind. So now we're ready to install these. I'm gonna show you what I did to the fence here to make it extra robust. That explains why I'm doing individual panels instead of the pre-made stuff. But before we jump into that, I wanna give our friends over at Cashway Building Products in Perry, Florida, a huge shout out. They delivered all of our fencing materials Materials. The delivery driver always shows up when they say they're always nice and friendly and we've been trying to support small local American businesses on the channel here lately. So if you're in the North Florida area, stop by and see the guys in Perry, Florida at Cashway Building Products and help support your small local American businesses. All right, so let's have a quick discussion about these runners that I put up before we start putting our fence panels up. Very solid post will help me with wind resistance. I also put four inch number 10 deck screws in. No nails here because wood will expand and contract, mostly contract down here in Florida, and you'll wind up with the gaps. Nails also don't hold very well. They have a lot of shear strength, but they pull out mighty easy, especially with drying wood. And I went ahead and upsized to a four inch screw that's gonna go deep into this post. I've got three per board. I went with two by sixes here. Most people do a two by four, which only allows your room to really get two screws in. I wanted a two by six, so I could get three, get some good friction going on back here. 
Only thing I might would have done different, it's got 16 foot two by sixes, so I wouldn't have had seams, or I could have staggered my seam and make a stronger fence. The reason I went with all the eight footers, I thought I was gonna be installing this by myself, but I wound up getting my wife to help me, so I could have handled 16 footers. That would be the only thing I would change. Now you can see the crazy slope we have in the yard. I wanted to keep all of these level on my bottom run, so we're real close to the ground down there, spaced out pretty good here. I don't want to space off the ground any more than that because you want good support behind the fence board that is going to eventually dry and I don't want to see any curling issues, but I'm okay with that. Same thing over here, very low to the ground. It drops and then we're back touching the ground over here. Okay, so I'm out working by myself today. I'm going to use a nail gun to put one nail in top and bottom just to hold these in place. But again, I'm going to come back and screw this in with shorter deck screws that'll go into this inch and a half two by six back here because I'm worried about drying, which is going to happen with treated lumber and cupping issues as the sun bakes this material right here. So I don't recommend nailing a fence like this, but just one quick nail especially since I'm working with such wide material, isn't gonna hurt everything to basically be a set of helping and holding hands for me, then I can come back and screw everything in. I'm also starting at this post because this is my longest board in what I've based the fence off of. Starting heading back this direction because we have a sloping ground, I'm gonna have to cut every single one of these as the ground slopes up. But you definitely wanna start at your lowest point with your tallest board. So if you look down at the ground, I'm gonna space these about an inch off the ground. Even with this being treated lumber, I do not like lumber touching the ground because this isn't a high treatment in a board like this. And we're gonna rock this area in. So when we come back and throw the rocks up to it, a little bit of a gap that I'm leaving down there, you're not even gonna see anyways. All right, so this is quite straightforward. I'm just gonna start at the end of the fence, space off about an inch, get everything close. Pop one nail in the dead center up top here. Better go turn my air pressure up. Now, because I'm gonna be basing my other boards off of this one, we wanna get it nice and plumb, so I'm gonna keep a level out here. And what I'll do is occasionally pop up two or three boards, and then I'll check for a level again. I'll do that every three to four boards to make sure I'm not really getting out of whack. Now, I'm not worried about speed here. I want my job to look good. You can pretty easily eyeball the top or you could even build a little jig out of say a two by four that can slide up and down the fence that you can butt your board in. That's more for production and speed. I have no issues taking my time to make sure this fence looks right. Let's also discuss the fact that I am butting these boards together. I can already see there's gonna be a ton of comments about that. A reminder, we're in Florida. We get crazy amounts of sun. I see wood dry and warp all the time. Butting these together gives me no issues. I'm, this isn't the Pacific Northwest where it's cold, damp, and rainy. I'm not worried about swelling here. I'm far more worried about contraction. If you're in an area where you may experience a lot of cool temperatures and a lot of moisture, well, you may wanna leave a gap in between your boards. A little nickel size gap, maybe up to a quarter of an inch. I have put up enough lumber in this state to know that if we can come back out here in a couple months after baking in the sun, and there's gonna be opened up gaps here, this stuff is really gonna shrink. I'm putting up a treated board here so it has some moisture in it, so that moisture has to come out, the wood is naturally gonna shrink. Speaking of these being damp and the treatment that's in them, we're also gonna let this fence dry out in the sun for a few months before we either stain or paint. We're still making our mind up. But if you're gonna stain, for example, you do not wanna stain fresh put up treated lumber. You wanna give that time to dry. We're doing the same thing with our entrance fence down at the driveway with our gate there. We're gonna let it probably dry about six to nine months in the Florida sun, then we're gonna stain it. So one of the last things to do is to come in on either side of this nail and of course for some odd reason I shot that nail off center and put in 
some screws. That'll really make this nice and secure. We'll do this everywhere there's a nail, so all three spots. Now I'm actually out of screws. I gotta run to town and pick up some more, but uh, you get the point there. Put two up here, two where you just seen, two in the bottom for every single board all the way around, plus the single nail that they have. That should keep things really nice and secure and from blowing off on us. All right, let's take a quick look. Here it is. The top wound up being perfect, I think. Nice and level. No issues with the install. And we have us one very strong fence. I think there is something else I'm gonna do to make it a little stronger. I'll tell you that in just a second. Now, as far as the little gaps and stuff you see at the bottom, I wasn't too picky about that because again, we're coming back in with weed fabric and then we're throwing a couple of inches of rock in this entire area and up to the fence. So you will not see those gaps at all. But here it is. Now it makes this area kind of feel like an extension of the house, a room. So envision out here, big fire pit area, cooking appliances, sink over here against this, some decorations, some planter beds. By that fire pit is gonna be some swings. It's gonna just be a huge rock in area with some paver stones. I think it's gonna look awesome. All right, even though this is already a very strong fence the way that I built it, what I may go back and do, since you don't really see the backside, is get some galvanized L brackets that go in here like some hurricane straps that'll nail into the post because nails have excellent shear strength and then screw them into this just in case we do get hit with another hurricane. And for some reason, those four inch long deck screws don't hold. Well, now we'll have L brackets at every single one of these connections. I need to go pick those up, but I think that'll make this as strong as I could possibly make it without just doing something overkill. All right, y'all, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something there. To be honest with you, this is the first one of these fences I've ever built. I could have made some mistakes, but I've worked with enough lumber in my life. This is, there's just nothing crazy about this at all. And uh, I knew I already didn't like some of the other techniques and products out there. I wanted a stronger fence. Fingers crossed. The next hurricane that comes through the area, this thing is still standing after it blows through and gets out of here. Thank y'all for watching. Catch you on the next video.